All right, you guys, so today's topic is function notation. And we're going to start off with an example. So let's say y equals x plus 5. All right, so function notation is simply going to change the way the y equals looks like. Instead of saying y equals, we are now going to use some form of f of x. So now what does this mean? This means that this is a formula, in this case called f, that has x values as its inputs. Okay, so that's what f of x means. Now, in this case, it's called f, but we can call it whatever we want. So we can call it g, so you can have some other examples here. We can call it g of x. We can even do a lowercase g of x, and these are different because they look exactly, um, they look different, so they are different functions. So we tend to change the letter to say, hey, this is a different function. So just so you know, we're going to call it something different, all right? So in math, we do tend to switch the notation because we want to work with multiple equations. So we want to be able to have different names for them so we know which one we're talking about. Okay, so that's why we are changing the notation for this. All right, let's keep going. So now, because you also are going to be saying this a lot, you need to know how to say it. So the way you say this is f of x, all right? The parentheses in this case, I know we're normally used to seeing a parentheses and it means multiplication. However, in here, it does not mean multiplication. Remember, it just means that there's a formula called f that has x values as its inputs, all right? So this would be called f of x. Likewise, if I had a g there, it would be g of x, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay, so that's how you would call them. All right, let's keep going. So if I were to see, now let's actually see how to work with this, right? So let's think about it. Let's go back to the example of y equals x plus 5. All right, so if I now am going to call it f of x equals x plus 5, and I'm going to tell you, hey, can you tell me, can you evaluate f of 2, f of 5, and f of 0, okay? So we're just going to do a bunch of examples. So let's do f of 2. So f of 2, you notice how the x now changed, right? It's no longer an x. Now I have a 2. So instead of that x there, I now have a 2. So you're going to replace it. So every time I see an x, it's now going to become a 2. So notice how that was where the x is. So now that's going to be a 2 plus 5. All right, so notice I just replaced everything. So wherever the x was is now going to be the 2. All right, let's keep going. So that's 7. So that means that f of 2 equals 7. All right, so you would do that for all of them. So f of 5 would mean that I'm going to plug in a 5 instead of that x there. So these are the replacements now. And that would be 10, all right? And f of 0, same thing. I'm going to plug in the 0 there. Then we get 5. So f of 0 equals 5. f of 5, we got that it was 10. And there we go. So now whenever we get a little more complicated, let's say I give you, hey, let me actually call it something different. Let's say g of x is equals x squared plus x. And I tell you evaluate g of 3. Okay, so remember you have to replace every time I see an x, I am now going to put in a 3. So think about it where all those x's are. So in this case, you have two places where the x is. So that's where I'm going to replace it. So g of 3, I'm going to put in the 3 every time I highlight it. So that's a 3 squared plus 3. So then I have my 9 plus my 3. 
then I have 12, so g of 3 equals 12. All right, so that's how we deal with them in any type of uh, equation. All right, when we get to tables, it does get a little easier. So let's say I get to a table. These are my x and these are my y's. But remember, because at this moment we are not calling it y, it's not going to say y anymore. It's going to say f of x. Oops, I totally messed that one up. Okay, so that's what it's going to say. So let's say you have one, two, three. And we're going to say that this just, this is just going to be that. Okay, so if you're giving a table and they tell you, hey, evaluate f of 2 and f of 3, well, you're going to look at what is the y value for those two. So for f of 2, when my x value is 3, I mean, sorry, when my x value is 2, my y value is 9. So my y value is 9. All right. Likewise for f of 3, where my input is 3, we have a different color, where my input is 3, my output was 12. Nope, already used that color, already used that one too. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's how it works on the table. It's a lot more straightforward. Okay, now let's go, let's go to a graph. Okay, so if I were to deal with a graph now. Let's say, I'm just going to make the straight line here. Okay, we're going to say that that's my graph. We're going to say that that's 1, that's 2, that's 3, that's 1, that's 2, that's 3. Very basic graph. Alright, if again I tell you, hey, evaluate f of 1 and f of 2. So you're doing the same thing. So for f of 1, remember that this is the input, okay? So let me actually make a little note there. That's the input. And you are looking for the output. So if I go to my graph, this is where 1 is. So I have to kind of trace it and say, hey, this is where that 1 is being touched in the graph. So now I have to look at the y. Let me change the colors here. So I'm tracing it, tracing it, tracing it. I got to this point right here. And I'm going to assume that it hits that one specifically on that y-axis. So my output for that one, it's also one. Okay. For, for f of 2, I'm going to look at my input of 2. And again, I'm going to trace it up to where my graph is at. And I'm going to assume that this one falls right in the middle here. Okay, so assume that that's right between the 1 and the 2 on the x on the y-axis. So whenever they don't actually give you a value, you do have to estimate it. So because it's right in the middle, it makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense that this is 1.5. How's about it right with 2.5? Okay, it makes sense that it will be 1.5. So we're going to estimate it. And we're going to say, okay, so this has to be 1.5. All right, so that's how you would deal with it in a graph. All right, so that is all, and we're good to go, you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.